You want to know the bad part about picking the highest knob on the on the mountain range to glass from? Yeah. Usually means it's also got the most wind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which trying to hold your spotting scope still creates a challenge. Yeah. So far we've only seen one deer this morning. And we are on top of this mountain overlooking some of the most amazing mule deer habitat in Nevada. And I'd heard that the numbers were down here because of how the uh, winter range has burned over the last 10 years that it's really impacted the deer herd here. I think I believe them. These deer migrate here, they migrate south and they migrate west and their winter range in both locations has been hammered by fire, the whole cheatgrass cycle. <sighs> hmm. Thought I'd try a new spot. I mean, we're glassing some of the same spots we glassed yesterday, but I wanted to stay up higher and glass down into some of these pockets, but nothing. Day three might turn out to be a bust at this rate. Had two stocks on day two. Day three is gonna make us work for it for sure. After today, it's halftime, boys. We're in hockey, we're just into the start of the second period. So far, we've seen one deer over here. Saw a buck over here this morning that I thought was gonna work out, but he buried himself into this big expanse of aspen. And then we saw a doe and a fawn over there. And I think that's about it. You got any advice, Dr. Jones? Nope. Mm. I mean, hey, that's, Jonathan. That's why they call it hunting. <laughs> you got any advice? Keep looking. Keep looking. Dale, what do you got for advice? It's time to change something big. Something big. Dale says it's time to hit the reset button. Well, we're going we're gonna to start over tomorrow. We've eliminated a lot of ground where they're not. The downside is we've got a film permit here on the National Forest. And everybody we talked to said, oh, you ought to be down low on the BLM. Well, I don't have a film permit down on the BLM. So you would think, oh, I could hunt this entire 6,000 square mile region. No. I thought, well, I got to plant my stake in the ground somewhere. Here it is. <laughs> Wind won. We're sitting up here and I don't know what kind of wind. But when you stand out here, out of the wind, you gotta have your feet under you. Ridiculous. So the idea is, park the truck at an angle, got some shade, wind block, and I can glass all this. I'm dumb, but I ain't stupid. Oh, there's some deer right there. Well, that's easy enough. <laughs> yeah, two does. Another doe. I'm ready to head back to camp and recharge some batteries. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> well, Mr. Jones, I saw 14 deer and one bull elk. And they all went to their beds about an hour ago. And I haven't seen anything since then. Yeah. I did not see a buck out of those 14 deer. Like Walt Pritchard said, you know, if you don't see them, it's a good chance they're not there. There's a really good chance they're not here then. Because <laughs> we've been plucking this over pretty hard yeah, here. I think we're done with this spot. And this, this is where, this is my go-to, so I don't know. Well, what do you say we go back to camp while well, there's still a little bit of light, grab some showers, yeah, and cook some brats. 
Day three, folks. That's it from the mountains of northern Nevada. Tomorrow. I'm glad I'm not working today. <laughs> uh. Day four, we got to start dialing it in here because the first three days could have been better. But, well, see what day four has. Came to a new spot, open for a new result. So far it looks like the same result, does. I'm getting close to 30 deer this morning and I don't have a single buck. Just don't know what to do, where the bucks are. You gotta be around here somewhere. Good thing. I've got a group of four bucks over here on the mine. How do you get over there, I wonder? What are you seeing, Mr. Newberg? Got a group of eight bucks here. You got some bucks? Eight of them. Yeah, what I'd like to do is go around the backside and glass them. Yeah, and find them. Yeah. The mine is on public property, but you can't go on the mine. Kind of weird, but... I mean, it shows a road coming up out of this ranch and going up uh, up there and then some four-wheel drive roads coming off of that. Who thought it'd be so complicated to access public land, huh? Well, this could be quite a jaunt, but we're going to go see if we can get to the other side over there where those bucks are. The mine is still over there, but maybe there's a, a road that's open to travel. So I guess we'll see. Take it out, uh, or are you gonna join in? No, you're gonna I'm, find this. You're getting kind of grumpy. I think you need to take a nap. <laughs> there you go. I'm getting frustrated. Uh, yeah, every but, road that leads to nowhere. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. no trespassing, mining activity. I don't think I'd be that wound up about it, except for the fact that it's public, public land, land. Yeah, and we can't jump on the home jump around. on the road to access where the deer are. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, what, that whole road went right underneath. Go, yeah, it goes within. We just stocked them three times mm -hmm. before noon. Yep. Oh well. Quit complaining, Randy. No one wants to hear about no, it. No, no, I'm. I'll listen. <laughs> There's a buck up there, but the rest of the guys are napping, 
So I'm a little nervous to wake Randy up because he's been a little cranky on this trip more recently. It's hot. We haven't been seeing a lot, so he really needed a nap. But I'm going to go wake him up because I think he needs to see this deer. Um, hopefully it's a good one and I'm not waking him up for nothing because he's not going to like that. I think we can probably drive, you know, maybe we can find a way to drive up oh. one of those uh, uh, exploration cuts. So what you're going to have to do with the thermals, at least the afternoon thermals, you need to get above them and hope that the thermals stay uphill when they get out of their bed. Because if the shadows hit that hillside and you've set yourself up above them, and those thermals start switching because it's shaded over there and they start going downhill, the gig's over. So that's the hard part about trying to spot and stock these deer in these aspen thickets. You kind of know where they are and you're waiting for them to come to you and it takes a ton of luck. But, oh well. That's what I'm going to do. We'll see how it goes. You ready, folks? Jonathan, the camera guy, has spotted at least two bucks. While we were all napping, he's been taking his mountain ops ignite all day. He's, I don't know how he's gonna be able to hold the camera still, but he's going in as camera one with me, and uh, we'll see how that goes. We got to gain about 600 feet of vertical and uh, come in above him. Once we get over on that other face, we'll see if we have an uphill or downhill thermal. If nothing else, we'll come in right at his elevation. So that way, whether it's going uphill or downhill, it won't be as big of a deal. My worry is they'll be up on their feet. And yes, here's how noisy it is. The whole hillside is full of that stuff. And two of us have to get within 40 yards on a big group of deer with great big ears.
is like this. If they come out this way and we're up here, we might get a shot.
58 yards, but too far for me, especially with a crosswind. But the bigger one, he's just feeding perfect broadside. But the smaller one, he was the more alert one. And with the sun going down as quick as it cooled off, the wind went from being straight from the west to being almost like slightly downhill as it's cooling. And uh, kept having to peek over. It's like, where are they? Where are they? Finally, I see them down in front of me about 80 yards. I start scooting a little quicker. And then I was trying to determine which little cut or groove they were going to come out in. And I thought they were going to come out in the one that was deepest to the west and if they would have I'd had like 38 yards and uh, but they came down just a little bit further than I had planned I and mean, as quick as that wind just the first time I felt it just changed slightly at all the little one is like looking and the bigger one even lifted his head like I smell something Oh well, if I could have got down there and covered 20 more yards when they came out, I might have would have shot, but not 58. But that's why I archery hunt. I archery hunt to get close, and sometimes close isn't close enough. <sighs> that is so fun. I love archery meal there in August, but man, it's frustrating. <laughs> If you need success and you need a lot of shots, this is not your game. But if you want to really hone in your skills, your thought about wind, noise, approach, anticipating what the deer are going to do, this is the game to play. Hope you were having as much fun <laughs> over there as we were watching you, man. That was exciting. That's why you archery hunt. Oh. You get that close and you're... Yeah. I should have taken my audio and put it right here. You would have heard. <laughs> but I just, I'm not going to take 58 yards. No. E even if it was calm, but then you get this crosswind. It's like, I mean, he had his head down. He was relaxed. It's like, man, if you were just 20 yards further this way, I'd, we might be gutting and gilling. Or, yeah. Oh, well. Well, that sure was fun, man. Well, Thank thanks. you so much. For Appreciate it coming to Nevada. Yeah. Well, what do you say we hurry so we can walk down to the truck with still a little bit of daylight? Yeah. Well, that sure was fun. Thanks, guys. Fun to watch. Uh, well, we're off. Well, thanks, Scott. Yeah, that was fun. I was getting